I am so excited for today's project. We are going to be making very budget-friendly dollar store sand pour art. I am very excited for today's project. This is something I did when I was younger in an art kit. And I have sense to revisit this because I was always like, oh, it's expensive or something but it's not. You can do a very fun sand pour using materials just from the dollar store and that is what we're going to do today. So first we need some sand. Dollar store usually carries sand, but my dollar store is always out of things, so they were out. Then you will need some paint. Again, you can get a little pack at the dollar store. You wanna use acrylic paint. Usually dollar store paints are acrylic paints, but if it's oil-based, it won't work as well. Then we'll need a container. Now they have lots of cute containers like this one, but I like jars, so I tend to save jars from things. So I had some already on hand. Since my dollar store didn't have sand, I thought I could get some out of this old pool filter, but that was way too hard to deal with. So then I found that we had this random leftover bag of pool sand. It's a lot chunkier than the sand at the dollar store would be, but it will work well enough for this video. The bag itself was kind of gross, but the sand inside was very clean, so I was glad for that. After I gathered my sand, I got out some paint. I have this little dollar store canvas with a little paint pack in it that I'm going to use the paints from that. And then I've got some plastic cups to mix the paint in. And I don't know why, but these containers are always so difficult to open. And when I finally got it open, it was a little bit dried out, but it was good enough for this project. So I scooped it into a cup and added just a little bit of water. Now, this is not at all precise the amount of water. You just need a little bit to make the paint runnier. Now, my paint is a little bit dried out, but it worked out okay in the end. It's only dollar store paint, and there's not an exact amount of paint to water. The more water you add, the more diluted and less vibrant your paint colors will be. So I only added a little bit, and you just need enough to make the paint a little runnier. But once I got it mixed up, I poured in some sand. And at first I added the sand just a little bit at a time and then mixed it up. But then I decided I was just gonna dump it all in and mix it all together. And it kind of looked like wasabi at that point. And also use like a knife or a spoon to mix it versus a paintbrush because it will go a lot better. So I couldn't really show me mixing it very well because I was holding the camera in one hand. It's a little awkward to mix with one hand, but basically I got it all mixed up and then I dumped it out on an old cookie sheet that I use for crafting. When you dump it out, make sure you get everything out of the bottom because there will likely be a little bit of paint still left in the bottom. I then spread the sand out on the cookie sheet so it could dry, but just as a quick note, the paint can end up drying to the pan itself. So either don't use a really nice pan or else put something on your pan first. But that's the basic process of coloring my sand. I repeated that with my other colors. Again, awkward footage of me trying to single-handedly scoop it out of the container. But basically we're just adding a little bit of paint and water, mixing those up once they're mixed up, adding the sand. And this time I decided to just dump the whole thing of sand on in and mix it all up. This time I got a pretty blue color and once I had it all mixed together, I dumped it out on my tray and spread it out thin so it could dry. Just make sure you get that last little bit out of the cup so you don't leave behind any of the paint. Once I had it spread out on my cookie sheet, I took it outside because we actually had a nice sunny day. Really it was like five o'clock at this time and the sun was going down, but it was really nice outside. And so I figured I'd leave it in the last little bit of sun to dry. And then I was scared my cats were gonna knock it off the back porch. So I moved it over where I thought it might be a little more secure. I I don't really know. Fortunately, they left it alone. I mixed up my other two colors, a nice pink and a purple, left them outside to dry until the sun went down and then brought them in and let them dry overnight inside. So the next day my sand was dry and the paint kind of glues it together a little bit. So we have to break it apart and we have to pop it off the pan, scrape it off a little bit and crumble it down into finer grains of sand. So I have these little jars I'm going to store it in. And at first I was using a plastic spoon to very carefully scrape it off my pan. I was a little nervous that I was gonna send sand all over the kitchen. And once I got it loose, I put it into my little jar. Now, really important with the paint method, you want to crush it up because the paint makes it stick together a little bit. You wanna make sure you break it into as fine as possible. In the end, my sand is still really chunky just because of the type of sand it is, but the dollar store sand is a lot finer and you'll end up with a finer grit. For the blue, my mom had the great idea of using this little scraper thing to get all the sand off. It went much faster, loosened right up from the board versus using the flimsy plastic spoon and I just gathered up all my different colors of sand, put them into a jar, and then crushed them really finely in a jar to make sure everything was broken apart. 
Now it's time to actually do the sand pour. You need some kind of container to pour into. I have like an old bullion cube container. I've got, this was a Starbucks drink, I think, but you could use like a glass soda bottle, whatever kind of container you want to use. And of course you can grab one from the dollar store. So I settled on using this glass Starbucks container that I'd saved like two or three years ago, finally found a use for it. And I used a razor blade and some goo gone to get the label off and made sure my jar was nice and clean and also that it was dry because you don't want any moisture in with your sand. Now we need to make a little funnel to get our sand into our jar. So I'm starting with a random piece of paper and I am curling it into a cone shape that is narrower at the base and wider at the top. And I'm using a piece of tape to tape it together. And I'm keeping my opening fairly big because my sand is so gritty. Then I'm taking another piece of paper and I'm rolling it into a tube and I'm gonna tape that together so it stays in a nice tube shape. Then we'll put the cone piece inside of the tube and tape them together. There is a little section where there's kind of a hole and I just tape right over that. A little bit of sand will stick to it and then we'll be good to go. So now we are ready to start pouring our sand. So first you want to test your funnel to make sure it works well. So I'm just pouring a little bit of green into there and you can aim where it lands in your jar. And now you get to create your own design. So initially I was thinking I was gonna do this cool like abstract like garden kind of nature scene where I was gonna do green with these little pockets of pink and purple that were supposed to be flowers. And then I put green around it and then I would top it all off with a blue sky, but it just didn't turn out the way I was envisioning it. So then I just kind of started pouring colors in randomly. But basically you just use your little funnel to aim where you want the color to go and you keep pouring in whatever color you want to use. A couple of extra tips. One, I'm using a pretty narrow container, so I'm just filling it all the way with colored sand. But if you have a wider container, you can fill the inside with just plain colored sand or with salt or something like that. So that way you don't use up all your colors and just aim your colors at the edge. Another option is to use something to push your colors down and you can create different little spikes and shapes. So here I'm using a straw. A pen would work better because a straw obviously is open, but you get the idea. You can use different things to create different designs in the sand. I'll link to a video that shows a fun sunset design you can make. But I just filled up my glass jar and then my piece of art was complete. Again, I abandoned my original abstract flower field design and just went with random shapes and just played around with it and layered it however I wanted. But this is my piece of sand part art. If you create your art in a container with a lid, you can of course fill it all the way to the very top, let it settle, and then put the lid on and store it just like that. Or if you have an open container like I do, you can use it as a vase for flowers with a wire stem. But that is the cheap and easy way to get vibrant sand colors to make your own sand pour art. Thanks so much for watching and happy crafting.